Hello everybody, my name is Sniper Spun, and welcome all of you back to part two of this top ten list where I talk about my top ten newcomers for the next Smash Brothers game for Super Smash Brothers 5 that as of now I feel makes sense for Super Smash Brothers 5. This is part two, this is going to be numbers five through one, so if you have not seen part one, I would strongly recommend you watch that so you can see what other characters preceded these characters on this list. You don't have to, I'm not forcing you, but it would be strongly recommended because I might talk about characters I just mentioned in the first part from numbers 10 through 6. That will confuse you otherwise. <laughs> so let's get started. Where we left off at with number 6 was a new Fire Emblem character. And I basically mentioned all the stuff in part 1 about it being whoever it is depending on what future Fire Emblem games are, a new game or a remake or whatever. I'm not going to detail that. If you want to hear my long conversation about Fire Emblem characters I did in part one, you can pay attention to it there. This is going to officially start with number five. We are in the, we are in the top five now with number five, and that one, that spot, is going to go to... Shantae. We, another, yet another third-party character on this list. I so far have already had Phoenix Wright at number ten because I basically mentioned how it was the next major choice, in my opinion, for Capcom. Shantae is a major third-party character, too, whether people really think so or not, because indie or not, she is one of the most associated with nowadays third-party characters with Nintendo. Every single one of her games, like I mentioned with Phoenix Wright, has been with Nintendo. Now, I'm not saying all of them have been with Nintendo, just like the Ace Attorney games. They've been on whatever phones and everything, too, and other online you know, stores. Just like Shantae games have, but since the Game Boy Color game back in the day, every single Shantae game, like, but there's there, there's three or four of them now. I'm not sure. I think there's oh, I think there's three, and the fourth one's coming out. There was a DS DSiWare one and a 3DS one, and then there's a new one coming out. Her series is so strongly associated with Nintendo, and she is one of the newest third-party characters that has such a close connection to them. And there's such a demand for her. She was so freaking demanded in, you know, in Smash Brothers 4. So if her series continues, and she's still relevant with Nintendo on the Nintendo Switch and whatnot, which I'm assuming there's going to be, a, there's going to be Shantae 5 and whatever. The series is too popular, really, to you know, just to throw away. It's going to continue. It's, a, it's an indie franchise that's going to continue. Um, and if it's so strongly connected with Nintendo, and, the fan, and she's still so popular, and the fans still so demand her, I think, well... Her chances were pretty high in Smash Bros. 4, even though they probably weren't as high as other characters, obviously. Her chances will only get better from here in Smash Bros. 5. If she continues to be a major indie character for Nintendo and so popular and demanded for, she's got a chance. On top of popular in demand and how closely connected her franchise is to Nintendo, look at her moveset. She's a flipping genie. We don't have any genies yet. She can use genie magic, genie powers. And then she could also, you can also throw in all the pirate stuff of her with a pirate sword and a pirate hat and the pirate cannon and everything else. So she could have a mix of a genie and pirate moveset. We don't have any pirates yet. And we certainly don't have any genies yet. So, Shantae could be that first choice. To do it, to mix those two together. So that's my number five. Shantae. She speaks for herself, people. She really does. And the games are so flipping good, you, you want to see her. Just so the franchise gets more recognition. Number four. Professor Layton. And just like Phoenix Wright, and just like Shantae, his franchise is so flipping closely tied to Nintendo, it makes too much flipping sense. Starting on the DS, he's gotten games on the DS, on the 3DS. There's been spin-off games with the Ace Attorney franchise, which coincides with both of these so closely freaking tied to Nintendo as, you know, third-party characters. And there's bound to be a Professor Layton game or two or seven or whatever on the Switch. It's so, it's a popular, you know, popular third-party franchise for Nintendo fans. A lot of, and, and gamers in general. And Professor Layton is such an interesting character, that gentleman, top hat wielding guy, that, you know, he looks kind of funny, but he's is such a really intricate character with an interesting personality on stuff, and his love for puzzles can really be made into a moveset. He can do a puzzle-based moveset where he throws puzzle stuff and does puzzle stuff at people, 
and he has wielded like a fencing sword or two or whatever or swords before so he can have some sword based attacks on top of puzzle attacks. He is a popular character. He was requested for Smash Brothers 4, not as much as say someone like Shantae was, but definitely not someone like Shantae. Shantae got a whole, whole, whole lot of push from gamers and demand. But he did get some, and he was an intricate choice, and he still made sense for Smash Bros. 4, but if the series continues forward as popular as it is and demanded, you know, with fans wanting more games, and it's still getting games, and especially on Switch, put two and two together, and Professor Layton would make a pretty good character for Smash Brothers. Interesting moves of potential, and the demand and popularity and reasoning and relevancy is certainly there. That's my number four. My number three is going to be this is do I I'm hoping I pronounced that right from Pokemon Sun and Moon because as we've already realized just like with Fire Emblem there's always new Pokemon because just like new Fire Emblem games there's always new Pokemon games and we just recently saw the release of Pokemon Sun and Moon the seventh generation Alola so there's probably going to be one of those Pokemon included in the game, unless by the time Smash Bros. 5 comes out, we have Generations 8, 9, 20, 1000, whatever. So they might go with those. Generation 7 can very well turn into another Generation 5, and Generation 3, Generations that kind of got screwed over by the release of Generations 4 and 6. But this do I is the starter type that really gravitates to me as the choice to include for two reasons. One... It's the most popular choice in there. Rowlet seems to be the most popular of the starter types. I'm more of a Litten guy myself, but I've seen more people gravitate to Rowlet. And it's one of the most popular starter types. And basically, <laughs> that helped uh, get uh, characters in before. Like Reninja. Like he kind of got in through the starter type and is him being the most popular like of Generation 6. So he seems to be the most popular. Rowlet to Desidua, you know, the most popular Pokemon from Alola, from Generation 7. On top of the fact, you know, people are still requesting it for Smash Brothers. Like, it's kind of funny, because they're already requesting it for Smash Brothers. Like, this is, like, the choice. Like, there's other Pokemon, too, especially from Generation 7, but it seems like there's, there's more demand for him, so there's already a want for him to be in Smash Brothers, or her, or it. You know, the gender, whatever. The Pokemon could be both. The other reason I want to say is because it's a freaking grass Pokemon, and we have Greninja, who's water, and Charizard, who's fire, and we need a grass type. So, how about a freaking grass owl that is an archer and shoots bows? You know, shoots arrows, a bow and arrow. It's essentially a owl version of Link without the sword and boomerang. That'd be interesting. And he does, you know, she does grass type moves and shoots a bow and arrow. What more can you want? That's my number two, and then number one, number three, I mean. Now we are on to number two, and number two is going to be Paper Mario, because it makes too much sense, because the Paper Mario series is still around, still gets new games, it's still as popular as ever as us. Um, <clears throat> and he's probably one of the most requested Mario characters this sure as heck be in. Like, Captain Toad makes sense because we finally get a version of Captain Toad and he was my number 8 because he makes a lot of sense, but he doesn't make as much sense as Paper Mario. But he makes sense because we now have an original version of Toad to actually put in the game. Paper Mario has been around since the N64. Paper Mario is, is an original Mario that won't be, you know, a clone of Mario. <coughs> Dr. Mario. <coughs> um, and it'd be interesting using the hammer and all the RPG type abilities. And the series is still around. It's got Color Splash on the Wii U. And there's going to be a Paper Mario on the Switch, I can guarantee it. So, include them. Interesting. Throw out Dr. Mario, because I don't want three, I really don't want three Marios. And there's really no need for three Marios. And put in an original, unique Mario that a lot of people want, a lot of popularity. The franchise is still there. He's still relevant. Why not include them? And that's it from number two. Now, before we get to number one... I'm going to do a quick list of some honorable mentions that were also really interesting characters, and I really do like their choice, the cho these choices as characters in Smash Brothers. They just barely missed the mark on being my top ten list, but they all make sense in some way, shape, or form to be included in Super Smash Brothers as potential characters for Super Smash Brothers 5. Now let's get that started and 
Um, and get on number one. Yarn Yoshi. Now I know that's going to be a clone, although technically the Yarn moves would make it original, although it would definitely have some Yoshi moves. But, you know, Yoshi's Woolly World was a pretty big flipping game. It was talked about, and Yoshi got another platforming game and from the creators of Kirby's Epic Yarn. An original um, Yarn, semi-original Yarn who set, it would give Yoshi someone, because there's really not many Yoshi characters to really include. I wouldn't really... Kamek is a Yoshi character, but it's also a Mario character, and Kamek's not really all that major of a character to include to begin with. And neither is Boshi, people. So Yarn Yoshi seems to be, sadly to say, the next choice. And there you go. The Monster Hunter. After Phoenix Wright, I would definitely say the Monster Hunter, and I mean the soldiers when I'm saying that. Monster Hunter. As in Hunter, as in this guy, as in people that wield their giant spears and swords and whatever. Because Monster Hunter is a popular franchise on Nintendo lately. It's been the third party franchise that pretty much jumped from Sony for the most part to Nintendo and has gravitated a lot of popularity on the Wii, Wii U, and 3DS. And obviously, we're going to get one on the Switch, too. Um, so, we'll include them. Like after Phoenix Wright, my fourth choice for the next, uh, pretty much next uh, Capcom character. Mona from the Warrior Wear franchise because she's the major female character from that series. One of the major female characters from that. And because she has a Ranger moveset, basically riding her scooter and doing pizza stuff and her adventure lady and all the different things because basically in photography she could have a very crazy, wacky moveset just like Wario. And because she's basically been in all her games different like occupations and stuff, so she has an original moose up there, and there are people that do want her. I mean, she's not the most wanted female character from the Warrior Warrior franchise, but there she's there. She has popularity and demand to some extent. The Warrior Warrior franchise is still around, and she's been in every single entry, and she will continue to be in every single entry. So, and speaking of uh, Warrior Wear, Ashley. Because she's also been in a large bulk of the games and is also a major character and the mage character, the witch that could do magic. And she is as heavily requested, if not a little bit more, than Mona. And she's as connected to the franchise as then, and the franchise is going to continue. She's still going to be there. So, uh, Mona, you know, <laughs> just like Mona, Ashley. They already have her theme. Why not put her in there? The Federation Force Soldier, because sad to say, there is like no one left for Metroid. And people could say Ridley this and Ridley that, but Ridley is too flippin' big. Sad to say, as awesome as Ridley is, chances are he's never going to be in there unless they do a form of him that is smaller. And I don't mean just shrinking him down in the game, an actual Metroid game where he is smaller to base it off of that one. We lost Adam Malkovich and Anthony Higgs from Metro Other M and Smash Bros. 4. Their chances are done unless they come back, and for Adam, that is pretty much zilch because he's dead. Um, all the hunters are old, and their games, they haven't been around getting Metroid games in a long flipping time. Unless there's a new Metroid Prime or Metroid whatever where the hunters show up, the hunters are kind of, you know, not there. So it is the Federation Soldier, and it's interesting to see, like, you know, someone from the Galactic Federation and see how different they fight in their suits based, you know, in comparison to Samus. So, and it could be like uh, an Avatar type character where they're all like red soldier or green soldier or blue soldier and they have their blast rifles and ice rifles and all that stuff. And you can give them some moves like Anthony Higgs and Adam Malkovich and stuff like that would do because they were Galactic Federation soldiers. So, <laughs> it is them. Incineroar, because I did put Desidue on the list because he makes more sense because Rowlet's more popular and we do need a grass type. But Incineroar, because Litten's like also really freaking popular and people like cats and this giant wrestling tiger cat thing that does fire attacks and dark attacks. We haven't had a wrestling character in there and it's, it's a dark fire type and Litten's popular and Incineroar's popular, so... Mm, Doi! Not as much as, you know, Desa do I, but Incineroar is there too and makes a lot of sense as well. And Tokyo Mirage Sessions character. Now, who they pick could be anyone's guess, but Nintendo is, you know, 
in Talent Systems, mixing Fire Emblem with the Persona Shin Megami Tensei franchise with Atlas. They're, those two companies are starting to come together a little bit more in terms of, you know, Shin Megami Tensei being on the 3DS and, you know, this game, and we might very well one day get a Persona on Nintendo. But this is the big collaboration game. Now, whether what char whatever character they pretty much choose, I have no clue. It could be Itsuki, you know, it Itsuki with Krom as his Mirage. But, and I know he's the main character and all that, but he's not really all that interesting. And the major inclusion to him would be the main character. And they get Krom as a Mirage part of his moveset. So if you want Krom, there you go. But he's too much like Marth, and we already have two Marths, three Marths as it is. Um, Subasa would be interesting using her spear and healing magic, and she has Sheeta. And she's interesting, but she's probably not the most interesting in the choice, especially Musa potential. We have Toma with Kane. He has a spear and does fire attacks. I, he's probably one of the more interesting choices. And then Kyria with Tharja as a dark mage. I, Toma and Tharja are my top two choices from this list because they... The fire spear, spear wielder or the ma dark magic character speak out to me if people want Tharja and they did request Tharja a whole lot in Smash Brothers. Here you go, get carry on, you can get Tharja as the Mirage. Then there's Ellie with Virion, a bow and arrow archer character. Ah, she'd be interesting, but we haven't had a character that was full on arrow, you know, bow and arrow, so you never know. But she has other attacks too, so there's, there's certainly that. And then we have Mamari with Drog, which would be pretty freaking, you know, adorable to see a little girl in a bunny armor suit wielding an axe and beating up Mario and Link. So, um, put her as number three because she's so freaking interesting just because of that. But yeah, it definitely would be more so um, Kyria or Toma because they seem to be most interesting. Slippy and Peppy from uh, Star Fox because Star Fox Zero came out. We have Fox, we have Falco, and you know what? We have Wolf, but this is for newcomers. Wolf is not a newcomer, he's a veteran, so that's the reason why I did not include Wolf. Slippy and Peppy are the remaining two members of Team Star Fox. Include them in some way. They're like a comedic moveset for Slippy where he falls all over doing stuff like that, and a more awesome Fox moveset for Peppy. There you go, because he's like the master, he's like the old, older, more trained soldier. Linkle, because the, uh, she was pretty much a, like a very well-received character in uh, Hyrule Warriors, I think her popularity in that and her you know, inclusion in that is to warrant the popularity of a female Link. And she has a crossbow, she has a different moveset from Link, and like Hyrule Warriors to this could very well, and whether, you know, these two games could very well be the start of a female Link female Link option or female Link as character like Linkle for future Zelda games. So, like, her being included, she was included, like, I, I feel her main reason for being in Harley Warrior was to grab, you know, you know, kind of gain a look on how fans would receive a female-esque Link character. And putting her in Smash Brothers will heighten her popularity more. Some people have already requested her for that matter. And she had the original moveset. that she wouldn't be Link with a sword. She, had, she mostly fights with a crossbow. And it could very well pop make her popular enough to be included in her or an equivalent character to be included in future Zelda main series games. And finally, Takamaru, because he is like the legitimate retro choice at this point, because he was supposed to be included in Smash Bros. 4. He was talked about for Smash Bros. 4, but was not included in Smash Bros. 4. So... He seems like front of the line for retro characters in Smash Bros. 5. And maybe including him to bring back Murasami Castle? For the Switch? I mean, he's been had a resurgence lately, partially because his game is on the Virtual Console, and you have him in his game reference in Nintendo Land, and Captain Rainbow, and Sister Trophy and Smash Brothers. So there you go. There's that choice. And finally... Let's get on to number one. My number one, as of now, most. My number one.
My number one, sorry people, my number one newcomer for Smash Bros. 5 that makes sense as of now is going to be, drum roll please, um, it's going to be the Inklings from Splatoon. And my main reason for including them is a new Nintendo franchise that, quite frankly, a lot of people love. It's going to be on the Switch, whether it's a port or a sequel, we don't know yet. And it's heavily requested. They were very heavily requested characters for Smash Bros. 4. So, interesting moveset with their squid guns turning into inkling squid things and squaring their weapons at people would make sense for a Smash Bros. moveset, and the series is going to continue. It's one of basically the biggest new IP from Nintendo in years, so why not include them? And that's it for my top 10 characters, newcomers, as of now, that makes sense for Smash Bros. 5 for the next Smash Brothers. I hope you guys like this list. In the comment section, what you guys think. Do you agree with these characters or not? What characters do you all want to see in the next Smash Brothers game? In the comment section down there, we can have fun discussing it back down there. Hope you guys all have a lovely day. See you all later. My name is Stephen Fun. Peace. Please subscribe if you want to. See you all in the next list. Bye.